everybody, Jennifer from Scrapping Under the Influence. I am back with a new design team project for Country Craft Creations. For this, I have used Graphic 45 Let It Be. I, I'm not, I'm kind of hit and miss with Graphic 45 as far as whether I like it or not. This one I just thought was so pretty. Um, so I just had to do something with it. So this is going to be a little bit different. Um, I wouldn't normally say, you know, this is a project that's going to be for beginners or whatever, but in this case, this is definitely not a project for beginners, <laughs> unless you're super ambitious and you like to torture yourself. <laughs> okay, so what I have done is an acetate box. And this is going to be kind of hard to show you where I'm not getting a glare because I still need light, but it just is going to be kind of a weird one to film. But it is acetate on all sides. If I could find acetate in gigantic sheets, there wouldn't be my little pieces in between here where everything gets attached. But unfortunately, that does not exist at this point in time that I have ways of getting my hands on. So um, what I have done is I have fussy cut on two sides just some of the sunflower elements from the collection and then a couple of the strips, uh, the border strips from the collection as well. I've got a shaker mix of yellow sequins from Country Craft Creations, some of the Prima Hardware pearls, and then just a handful of little green um, buttons galore gems. Okay, so as you can see looking top down, it is clear. Okay, so the lid is also clear. So on the back side here, I've just got some of the um, ephemera from the collection from the ephemera pack. On the front, I've got um, Tim Holtz metal corners. This is actually a I honestly don't know what this is. It was in the like leather working section at Hobby Lobby. I needed some kind of pull and drawer pulls. Of course, the back on it was way too long and my husband was out of town so I couldn't like have him cut it down. Um, so that's what that is. And honestly, it worked really, really well. Um, again, Tim Holtz embellishment that I had in my stash. When you look at it from the inside, of course, I've got the Tim Holtz corners on here as well. And you will see um, in the tutorial, I actually had corners on it more like this. So the cardstock and I decided I really didn't like them on this piece as well, which was where I dug out my little metal corners and that one's not glued down all the way. So I need to fix that. Um, but as you can see, it's clear all the way around. The other thing, this box piece in the center is free floating. So what that means is you can slip a picture in on the side, on every side. And that honestly was kind of where the inspiration for this came from. Um, we've got a, something got glued there, which shouldn't have been. Um, my mom, or well, when I was a little kid for my grandpa for Father's Day one year, my mom put together this photo cube and it's like this little box and it has four pictures on the outside and then the lid comes off and, you know, he could put stuff inside this little box. And I always thought it was really cute. Like when I was a kid, I was just was really interested in it. I'm not sure why. My mom now has it in her office at home. And that's actually where my inspiration to even try this came from was that photo cube. And how could you do this and make it, you know, kind of have a wow factor to it? I will be perfectly honest with you, and it's not the simplest to put together, but once you put together one of these panels, and that makes sense, the other three are all the same. You're just repeating that those same steps, and then um, actually building it from that point, like attaching everything together and building the rest of that, piece of cake. The acetate panels for the sides are probably the most difficult part of this, and that's honestly just because you're scoring and folding 
acetate, which is always kind of tricky to say the least. So um, the tutorial plays next. I will be doing inserts and things for the box, but that will be a separate tutorial. That is not part of this tutorial. This tutorial is just going to be the box itself. So um, tutorial is going to play next. As always, thank you for watching. If you end up making this, and I sincerely hope some of you end up making this, <laughs> I would love to see it. Um, I showed it to a couple of people and they had suggestions like, you know, aquarium paper or beach paper, that kind of thing, which beach paper, how fun would that be to do this and do sand in here, the sand and the pearls. I mean, I may have to make a second one, even though by the time I got this finished the other day, I said never again, but that's a, that's beside the point. I'm past that point now. Now Jennifer is happy with the project as opposed to frustrated with it. I would be willing to make another anyway. I'm getting completely off topic. Anyway, I sincerely hope somebody makes this. If you do, please share it on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations on Facebook. I also have a craft group on Facebook called I Scrapped Under the Influence, a craft group for all crafters. It desperately needs a new name. I have not come up with anything, and I need to just ask my husband to brainstorm something for me because he's really good at that. Um, and then, you know, you can find me as well on Instagram, and you can always post and tag me there as well, Scrapping Under the Influence. So tutorial starts now. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we're going to score the acetate and cut the acetate on cardstock so you guys can see what it is I'm doing. So you're going to need four pieces of acetate that are 8 by 12. You're going to start with 12 inch at the top of the scoreboard. You're going to score it half an inch, 5 and 3 quarters, and I'm using absolute crap cardstock, and I can tell as I'm trying to do this, uh, 6 and 1 quarter, so half inch, 5 and 3 quarters, 6 and 1 quarter, and 11 and a half. Keep in mind when you're scoring acetate, especially the heavier acetate like I use in like um, Country Craft Creation cells, you do need to go over those lines usually three times I find works best. Okay, once you've done those lines, you're going to turn it so the eight inches at the top. The other thing too when scoring acetate, because the minute you get a good score in there, it tends to lift up, I always will hold it and start from the opposite side as opposed to starting uh, like at the one inch side. I always start from the outside. So we're going to start at seven and a half and you're going to go all the way down. You're then going to go to seven and you're just going to go to this first of the two middle score lines. Okay. And you're going to one inch again, just to the first of those two middle score lines and then half inch one more time. Okay, so to make this easier to see, if I can find a pen, it's like I literally just had a marker here. If I can get the lid off, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna just move this really quick, and I'm gonna trace over my score lines. Okay. So on your acetate, this is going to be your center. We're going to have a score line here. Score line here. Oops. If I could, you know, keep in that groove with the pen. <laughs> okay. So that's going to be half inch, five and three quarters, six and one quarter, and eleven and a half. Coming from the other way, you're going to go seven and a half. Seven and a half is going to run all the way down. The seven inch is going to come to there. One inch is going to come to there, and then half inch all the way down. Okay, so then you're going to cut. You are going to cut out. All of this and all of this 
Once you've done that, you'll then cut across your corner here and here like you would for a pocket. You're also going to do it down here and down here. Okay, you're going to cut on this line to this line. You're going to cut this line to this line. Same thing over here. This one to here, this one to here. Okay? So, when all of that is said and done, then you're going to start um, actually folding and doing some other things here. So, okay, so you've got your acetate scored. I'm going to actually cut this one to show you like it, what it's going to look like after it's actually cut. Score tape like going crazy here. Not sure what happened. I'm going to pull that off. Um, you do want to, before you cut this and um, fold your score lines, you do want to do your score tape first. It will just make it a lot easier to put the score tape down. You want to put it on each of these half inch tabs on this side and then on this inner half inch piece on this side and then the outside here and then flip it over on this same end and you're going to put one on this outside as well. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start over here. We are going to cut up along that half inch score line all the way to that second middle score line. And then you're going to cut across. Okay. Save this. These little, a couple of these pieces, not all of them. You only need like two or three of them, um, because you'll use these to help make your elements that go inside here stay standing. Okay. I've got just stuff everywhere on this today. Although I'm pretty sure it's impossible to keep acetate from ending up with stuff on it at this point. Okay, so we're cutting up this side as well. And then there. Okay, and then on this side, you're going to cut in to the score line. Same thing on this side. In to the score line. Then we're going to cut across our corners through where the score line intercepts, sex, just like we do when we're making pockets. And same thing on the other end. And there you have it. So after it's all cut, that's what you're gonna have, okay? So what we're gonna do right here, so you see we've got this little corner piece sticking out. What you're gonna do is take your bone folder and you're gonna put your bone folder from edge to edge here, like so, and then fold this over and burnish it down, okay? Because what it does is it's gonna make this little tab right there, okay? I still have score tape like where it's not supposed to be, and I don't know how it got there. Oh my gosh. Okay. So again, I'm just pushing up with my bone folder, and then over, and then burnishing that down. Okay. Let me grab one thing really quickly. Okay, so you also need, for each one of these, you'll need one piece of cardstock that is one half inch by six inches. So you'll need four total. Okay, you also need for each one of the panels, two pieces that are three quarters of an inch by five and a quarter. I know I've got four of them here, the ones that have the score tape all over the back, ignore them. You don't end, actually end up using those. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish our score lines. I'm going to start with the center ones. Okay. Which 
just got stuff everywhere today. On the outside, I can get it later. Okay. So I'm going to do my sides as well. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our two pieces of three quarter inch by five and one quarter that do not have the score tape on them. We're going to put these down inside. So I'm going to get the backing off the score tape. I'm going to line this up. It's going to run top to bottom. I'm going to put it right in that groove where we folded our score line and then just burnish this down. Okay. It is so staticky in here today because it's so dry. Okay, same thing on the other side. going to do the same thing on the bottom and that's where our little half inch piece is going to go okay but before we get any further I need to put our little fussy cut element in here so what I'm going to do to keep that so that it doesn't fall over I'm going to take, this is about a two inch by one and a half inch piece of acetate, so just a scrap. I'm going to score this at a quarter of an inch, half an inch, and then at, how big did I say this was, two and a quarter? Uh, two inches, okay? Before I fold and burnish this, I'm going to take my score tape and I'm going to get it on here and on this end. Okay. And I will go ahead and fold that over. Maybe. And burnish. Fold and burnish. And maybe. The score line on this bottom piece was crooked, but that's okay. Okay, so. And then I'm going to take just a, oh my god, seriously, okay. Okay, so this, I just need to kind of lay this here, so I figure about where the center of this sunflower that I have fussy cut is along the flat bottom part and we're just going to adhere that to the bottom okay and then I'm going to make sure this is folded up the way it would be flat ready to go when the whole thing is assembled and then I will go ahead and attach this up at the top so what's going to happen is I'm going to take just another little piece of score tape, doesn't matter. I'm gonna put that right here on that. 
and after we get the sides closed up, then we'll reach in here and pick this backing off and attach the back side of this. However, in the meantime, I have scored this half an inch from, an in from the end that is actually going to go down on the side of the panel. And this is actually the second time I've had to put this one down because I got this one really screwed up about 10 minutes ago. Okay, so this is going to go down like so. And I am just going to give that a minute to dry. Okay, what's going to happen is we're going to pull the backing off on this outside edge. You want to make sure this little corner goes to the outside, okay? Not on the inside, on the outside. Okay, I'm going to put this face down. And I'm going to make sure that everything is tucked in where it's supposed to go. Get this side in the groove where that score mark is. And then I'm going to push that side up and over and then burnish it down. And you can push this down. It's not going to hurt anything because the acetate will pop right back up. Okay. So on this other side, again, I want to make sure that little corner is tucked in on the outside. Again, I'm just going to make sure everything's straight and push this one down. Okay, now, okay, so I went ahead and added some shaker fill. I've got the rest of my pieces sitting over here to the side. What we're going to do is turn this over. You're going to take a half inch by seven inch strip of cardstock. And we're going to set this in here. We're not pulling backing off of score tape just yet. But you're going to line this up in here so that it goes edge to edge. Okay. You're going to have a little triangle hanging over. That is what we want to have happen. So once I have this sitting where I want it, I'm going to Go ahead and get the backing loosened up on my score tape on one side. Honestly, it doesn't matter which one. Whichever one is easiest for you to grab. Actually, I take that back. Line it up, and then we're going to get it off of whoops, this piece that's laying down first. Okay, and then you're just going to push that up, and you can lay it down and burnish. Oops. Okay, then we'll get it off the other piece. Make sure that is down in the groove where the score line is. Go ahead and fold that up. And then I'm going to burnish along here. And then you'll see that you've got two little tails hanging off here. What you're going to do is the same thing we did with the, the little corners we had up here on the acetate. We're going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to take my bone folder and push those over. Okay? Because that is going to seal off our shaker. At this point, you can, because you're going cardstock to cardstock, you can glue those down. But what we're going to do on the ends, on two of them, I have used the wider half inch score tape. Okay. So on the other two, and I've got two of them attached right now. So I've got the wider score tape here, and then I've got three eighths on this other one. So this one is going to get three eighths inch score tape. 
and it's going to go, wait a minute, hold on one second, because this goes like that. Actually, I think I put this one on wrong. That's okay. It's going to go towards this outside. Actually, no, I take it back. It's fine where, where I had it, I think. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay. So I am going to take, and I'm actually going to pre-cut this so that I have a nice clean edge. Maybe. And I'm just going to kind of lay it on my mat here and measure five and a quarter. And I'm going to grab that little tab. Like I said, you can glue it down, but you're still going to want to do this part as well. And I'm just going to go over this to reinforce where that whole thing seals up on that side and to close off the um, end. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Okay, so we are going to start getting this whole thing assembled. You're going to have, depending on what you fussy cut for the inside, so I did two low pieces and two big pieces. So I'm doing the lower pieces so they're opposite each other and the bigger pieces so they're opposite each other. So to attach this, all I did, I've got it standing up, and once you get the first one attached, the rest of these should attach a lot easier. I'm getting my backing off of my score tape, and all I'm doing, facing it towards me, and I'm matching up my edges here, okay? So you can see you've got your little V here. And then I am just keeping those at that outside edge. So this edge lined up together. I'm just slowly turning this in towards each other until that score tape grabs. And then you can kind of pinch it and it grabs and there you go, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing on one side here, and then we'll seal it off on the other side. So again, I'm just gonna get the backing off. Let me tell you, this way is working much easier than what I had originally done. I just spent the last hour and a half tearing this apart to redo this entire method right here, because what I had done last night did not work. Okay. So again, I'm just lining up those corners. And sticks together, and there you go, okay? So now, we can go ahead and do our last corner here. Ooh, that is not what I meant to do. <laughs> Oh my god, it's it's been a day so far, and it's only 11 o'clock. All right, so again, we're just going to make sure our corner is square, and there is the outside of our box. We've got all the paper pieces in here. Okay, so we're going to turn this upside down. And we are going to make our bottom. For the bottom, you need a 7 by 7 inch piece of lightweight chipboard. And I am going to just kind of lay this on here and make sure it's going to fit and make adjustments as necessary. We're good. I'm going to cover the back of that with tape. And I'm going to figure out where I put my 1 inch spacers. 
So I'm going to take a 9 by 9 piece of cardstock, 1 inch spacers. I'm going to get the backing off of my tape. And we're going to go ahead and wrap this pretty much like we wrap an album cover. Okay. So we're going to line that up. Move the spacers. The only thing we're going to do slightly different than we do when we wrap an album cover. The lightweight chipboard has a tendency. Okay, so artisan artisan cardstock doesn't crack, but because of the fibers that are in here, sometimes you'll have little tiny fibers that'll pop up where it looks like it's trying to crack. You can literally take a nail file and file those off. But when doing the lightweight chipboard, it helps to kind of go around and work that cardstock along those edges. And when you do that, you're not going to have any of those fibers popping when we um, wrap this around. You can do this on your normal covers as well, and it works really well there too. I think it was Michelle Allen um, that had actually shown that that's how she does hers a lot of times, and it was really neat. Okay, so we're going to just go ahead and fold and crease our corners. And I'm just folding against my tabletop just like normal. We're going to go ahead and cut out our corners in miter. Miter. Do be careful when doing this method of mitering with the lightweight chipboard because it's really easy to accidentally cut your corner of your chipboard. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I've done it more than once, sadly, even though I know better. So I'm just mitering all of those corners. Okay. And then, as you know by now, I'm sure, I do prefer to use score tape and glue. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the back off of my score tape. I love this pokey tool. It's so pretty. I just have a hard time using it because, I don't know. I don't use it super often for that reason because somehow I just I have a hard time gripping it. I don't know why. All right. So now we are going to go around and just like you would wrapping the cover pieces for an album we're going to go ahead and fold those sides over and burnish them down and one more okay and then I've got another piece that is just under seven by seven, which since it's actually going on the inside here, I'm actually gonna cut this down just a little bit. I think I'm gonna take this down to six and three quarters by six and three quarters, because this will be sitting on top of this part, so it's not gonna make a difference. All right, so I am going to actually, I just don't want it bubbling, which I think it'll be okay, but I really don't want to 
brisket. So I am gonna just get a little bit of tape just kind of in the middle here. And then we'll glue around the edges. Which, I mean, it's gonna be in the bottom of the box. I don't know that it matters. Um, and then there's gonna be an inner box that's gonna sit in here. But really, I probably don't need to cover this. But just in case, so that I don't have to like do any weird covering or matting once the interior pieces go in, um, I am gonna go ahead and just cover this up. All right. All right, so the pretty side is going to go on the bottom. So this is going to go on here like this. Okay, what we are going to do is I am going to take Decide if I want to do it with a half inch. No, I do not. Okay, I'm going to take 3 8 inch score tape. I just got glue on my acetate because, of course, I just did. It's okay. Usually, you can get it off with rubbing alcohol. Usually. opposite side because as I do this I'm also going to kind of push those corners in a little bit more and make sure that that grabs them and kind of holds them in a little more square I mean they're they're pretty much spot on right now but just to be safe Opposite sides. Okay. So I'm going to stand up to do this to make sure everything's square. Okay. Not that anybody's going to see the bottom of your box necessarily, but we're still going to put the pretty side of our wrapped chipboard out. Okay, so we're good. I am going to start on one of these pieces. I'm going to line this up over here. Make sure everything's squared up. I'm sure because I'm standing, I'm like way louder than I normally am. So if that is the case, I apologize and burnish that down, and then we can lift up just a touch, get that started, and again, and make sure our corner's lined up, and then just pull that out, burnish it down, and then I do the same thing on this other side. I mean, we could have absolutely done this with construction strips or something, but I wanted it to be truly like, you know, a truly see-through side. So, I gather up some stuff and we will work on some little decorative corner elements because I do want to cover up on this very top, just so you're not seeing that seam but I don't want to cover the whole thing. So I'm going to get some little pieces cut to do some little decorative corners. 
and then we'll work on our box that's going to sit down on the inside. So I'll be back. Okay, so for the box that's going to sit down inside, um, you're going to do this twice. This is what it's going to look like when it's ready. You're going to start with a sheet of cardstock 12 by 11. We are going to score this at 5 and 7 eighths and 11 and 3 quarters. I'm going to turn and we're going to score this at 5 and a quarter and 10 and a half. Okay. Um, you're going to do, okay, you're going to do that twice. You're also going to do lightweight chipboard. This is 11 and a half. Hold on, let me make sure. No, I'm sorry. 11 and three quarters by five and a quarter. You're going to score this at five and seven eighths. Okay. So what we're going to do is, let me just double check which way I actually did this. Okay. We are going to cut along this quarter inch score line on one end down to the 5 8 score line. Okay. We're then going to cut out this bottom corner. And then we are going to cut up the middle score line right here. This one we will end up having to do a little bit of trimming here, but nothing too bad. The miter over here, miter here, and miter here. Okay. Now, the lightweight chipboard, all you're going to do is fold it in half. But what we are going to do is just take, I've just got half inch score tape. I'm going to go right out to the edge on this. And then I'm going to go to the center, but not across. I'm going to go up next to where we have folded the um, lightweight chipboard. Same thing here. And then I'm going to do a couple of strips in the middle. Again, and then do the same thing on the other side. So, I can pick it up. <laughs> okay, so we are going to take the backing off on one side. Actually, no, before I do that, I'm ahead of myself here. You're going to take a Sharpie, and I've lost my Sharpie. Okay, okay so this is going to go on here. So we're going to go along the bottom edge
cool thing about the lightweight chipboard is we can do this. We don't have to fully wrap anything. I'm going to go up the center score line. And then we'll do the bottom part of this once we get this actually tacked down. So I'm going to get the backing off. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pick this up and do it this way. Because I wanna go all the way to this outside edge, all the way to the bottom. Okay, push that down and we can flip this over, fold it back, get the rest of our score tape backing. So this should fold. Okay. So then we're going to fold up and over. So we're right about where the score line is, but you're not going to be exactly on the score line. So you will need to use your bone folder. Same thing with the other half. Just pushing up against and over and down. Okay, so this is where you want to make sure when we fold this up that the cardstock isn't bunching up. Okay, so this side seems to be okay. because when I cut it, I was like slightly crooked on this one side, which is fine. I'm gonna hit this with the marker just a little bit more, which I totally need a new black Sharpie down here. This one's like on its last legs. <laughs> and then two, we got that bottom edge. We are going to, oh, we're good there, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get this side down because it's fine. We don't need to trim anything off of this one. We're going to have to trim just a tiny bit off this other one, but that's okay. It's easy. And actually on this side, I'm going to go up the edge of the paper on this one side just so that I don't have adhesive sticking out. one we are just going to go up and over and then down okay I fold this tab out burnish it down and it's probably going to need miter just a tiny bit
And then we're going to come up here, which again, we have a score line. That's just in large part to make sure that when we are putting our chipboard on paper, that it's lining up where we need it to. Okay. And then I was not folded in right. here just a tiny bit okay so on this side now what I'm gonna do is take my ruler and I butt it up against the edge of the chipboard here and I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna trim just a tiny tiny bit off of this I don't want to get too crazy so that you don't cut too much. And I'm going to put that down. Let's see. Yes, okay, that's perfect. And so again, we're going to go around with our score tape. And this time we are good to just put this down. Okay. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and pull our backing. There. I'm going to get this one little edge over here with the Sharpie. Honestly, if you've got a black Copic, that'd be even better. But I don't know where mine is at the moment, so that's okay. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and make sure that. Everything is good here. All right, so moment of truth. So once this is all attached, okay, and we're doing these little tabs to the inside, which is why we covered that outside corner on these, this should all slide right down in here. So I'm actually going to slide that one in first, and then I'm going to slide my other one in, and it looks like everything is going to be good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull those back out. We are going to put some glue on our little bitty quarter inch tab here. And we're going to line this up. And brush that down. Slid down on me. 
Actually, that's how we can do it. Didn't think of that. Okay. Actually, I have to stand it up. We can go corner to corner, edge to edge, and then just lay that down and burnish it down. Lightweight chipboard. I always forget you can actually do that. <laughs> you can't do it with normal chipboard. It doesn't work nearly as well, but it does work great with the lightweight. So, um, we are going to put a bottom piece in here just to square everything up. However, before we do that, we want to mat this outside. So, the way I'm going to do this, the sides that have this little short one are going to get the black. The sides that have the bigger sunflower are going to get the red. So, essentially, we're just going to alternate. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and mat this. I'm actually not going to mat the inside of it. I don't think it's going to be necessary, but you could if you wanted to. And honestly, if I decide later on, that would be really easy to just, you know, slide some mats down in there and, you know, everything be good. But for now, I don't think I want to do that. Okay. And this is just the front and back of the same paper. So that makes it super easy. You're not going to have like some weird leftovers. Which I end up with a lot of weird leftovers. <laughs> Matting stuff literally takes me forever for that reason. Okay. I sincerely wish I could find lightweight chipboard in black because that would be awesome. Okay, so now we're just going to close this up. And again, tab is going to go to the inside. So for this one, we are going to have to hold this one. I am just going to make sure I'm lined up at the top and then all the way to this outside edge. And I'm just going to hold this for a minute while it dries. And then we're going to get our piece for the inside bottom. And what I'm going to do with that is we're going to measure what our actual interior, you know, is. And I've actually got a piece of lightweight chipboard that I had wrapped last night during the fiasco that would not... Did I just do that wrong? Oh my god, I did. You know what, though? It's okay. That one should have been turned over the other way. And I had it sitting wrong when I put them out. So, but you know what? I think it'll actually be okay. Because I can get the red behind my big one. And then I've got flowers the rest of the way around. Actually, I like that. That's okay. So for once, I had a screw up that actually was okay. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure how big this needs to be. And I'm showing 5 and 7 eighths, which is correct. 5 and 7 eighths. So what I'm going to do... on me. So I had a piece that I wrapped yesterday that was actually bigger than I needed it to be. So um, I'm just going to cut it down because it is completely wrapped the way it needed to be. 
which for this, actually, you don't need to wrap it because nobody's going to see the bottom of this once it goes in the box. Okay, so I just cut that down, and it's literally just going to go in here. That'll square everything up and tighten it up. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm leaving this flat on the table, and I am standing up again so I can see what I'm doing here. So if I suddenly get louder, that's why, because I'm like two inches from the camera. <laughs> okay. And then I am just going to drop this down inside and push it down. And that square is going to square up our box and make it all good. So this is the one I want there. So I'm going to give this a minute. I'm actually going to kind of push down and give this a minute for that to grab and dry. And then we'll get glue on the bottom and we'll drop it down in. Turn the way I want it. And this will just slide right down in here, like so. It will be flush with the top, and you'll have just enough space on the sides. Let's see if I have a scrap here that we can use. So, what you can do is you will actually be able to slide pictures down around the outside of this, which was kind of my whole point. Um, my mom sitting in her office at home has a photo cube that used to be in my grandpa's office. But basically it just had little picture frames all the way around the outside and then there was a lid and you could like, you know, put stuff in it. That's kind of what I was going for with this. With something that, you know, looks really neat. You know, we of course have our shaker element because y'all know I love my shaker elements. And this one, lean it over even though I didn't want it to, but that's okay. Um, but you can still, there's, there's still a functionality for pictures. So, let me get my stuff together for our lid and I'll be right back. Okay, so for the lid, you're gonna start with a piece of acetate that is nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter. We're gonna score this at one inch on all four sides. Do you still have the tissue paper on the back of that so you can see what I'm doing with it? <clears throat> so I am going to very carefully cut on the score lines and cut these corners out. one. Try to do it as straight as possible. Okay. And, and at this point I'm probably going to have to take the tissue paper off, but I'll try to leave it. We're going to go ahead and fold on our score lines and burnish. Yeah, I have to take the, the tissue paper off. It wants to come off, that is. There we go. Okay. Anyway, we're going to fold on score lines and burnish.
Okay, so then I did four pieces of cardstock, two by two, scored it at one inch and one inch, and then cut out one corner. So this is gonna go, eh. so this flat part is gonna sit down there, the bent part is gonna go in the corner to form the corners of our lid. Okay, you're gonna do that all the way around. And again, it is acetate, so I'm gonna have to do score tape with this. Okay. And then on the outside, I'm doing the exact same thing. So two by two, scored at one inch, and then I'll cut these the exact same way and mat those on the outside to reinforce the corners. And then at that point, it's however you would like to decorate this. Um, I'm gonna see, I think somewhere I have like some Tim Holtz drawer pulls that I've had for a thousand years that I'm gonna use like my crocodile to punch a hole in the center here to attach one of those, just so you have an easier way to like lift the lid off and on. Um, you know, you can add whatever other decorations you would like to to this. Um, at this point, you could just leave it as is to make it a keepsake box or a gift box or something like that. Um, I am going to do a second tutorial with some inserts and things, probably a small folio and then some other inserts to go inside this. Um, but that's going to be a separate tutorial. So let me, um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. You will, of course, have, will have that. You, of course, will have seen <laughs> the finished product during the walkthrough at the beginning of the tutorial video. So as always, thank you for watching. If you end up making this project, please share on uh, Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. You can also share it in my group. I scrapped under the influence a craft group for all crafters, which desperately needs a new name and I haven't come up with one yet. <laughs> or you can um, tag me on Instagram at, at scrapping under the influence. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.